Fearless Church, Pastor Chris here. Man, it has been a crazy week or more. Oh, I just got off the phone with uh, one of my friends who is a black pastor in West Dayton. A little earlier, we were on a phone call with multiple pastors. I mean, a Zoom call, whatever. That's what we've been doing with COVID, right? And just, uh, just talking. And um, man, like my mind and my heart is is racing. I, I've been having, like you and your family, you and your family, uh, and those are your friends. I'm sure, I'm sure it's similar to what's happening in my house. You're watching all that's gone on in the last month, whether it be Amon Aubrey, uh, Brianna Taylor, that obviously this horrific m- murder that we observed on social media, the killing of George Floyd. I mean, imagine, imagine, imagine what his family, his friends, his coworkers, his neighbors, what they've experienced amidst all this. And, and man, I just, I don't know. Like I, I, I I had some buddies ask me and say, why don't you, why don't you make a comment? Like you're a lead pastor in a church in, in the greater Dayton area. Why don't you make a comment? And it's a good question. Like if, if you're my friend and you're watching or you're a member of Fearless Church or out in our community, uh, if you'll look from today back, you'll say, man, very little has been said at this point. And, and I take full ownership of that. I think thoughts been rolling through my mind. And, and, and the, the scripture that keeps coming to my mind is be quick to listen, slow to speak. Like as I think about the platform of social media, I think, man, like we're, we're all making comments. They're making comments, making comments. And you're looking at a guy that needs to learn, that needs to listen and, and, and have conversations before he makes comments. And I feel like if you were to ask me, hey, what, what direction what, what response do you want Fearless Church to make? I would say if, if there was an area that I'd want to lead us in the days ahead, it would be to press in and have some conversations. Do we need to make comments? Yes. Do we need to make it bold and clear? Hey, for, for those of us that are white and live in this, this privileged way that we do and, and Let's speak up and definitely make comments and, 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 and yell out with all we think, all we can. Black lives matter. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, our brothers and sisters that are not in Christ yet, that are a different race, specifically those that are black, like they are, they matter. We've got to leverage our platforms and our positions to, to make a difference. And, and I feel like as a country, for the first time, we're hearing what black America saying, but we also have to press in one step farther and we have to listen. Not just hear the voices, but press in and say, like, let's, I'll start with me. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand the hurt. I don't understand the pain. I don't understand what it is to, to live life as a black man. I don't. I'm ignorant. And that ignorant has to stop. Like it has to stop and it has to it has to say, you know what? Now's the time to listen, to engage in a conversation. So so here's what we're doing. I'm talking with pastors. And and what I've observed, and I want to encourage you with this, those of you that live in the greater Dayton area, there are pastors, white pastors, that I feel like are for the first time, myself included, are getting around the table with our black pastors in our community and listening and saying, hey, man, talk to me. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? Asking the right question. How can we help? And over and over and over again, the the church leaders are, are, are beginning the first baby steps. And I say that very purposely, baby steps and uniting with one another. My pastor friend and I, we just got off the phone and said, dude, here's the problem. Like we don't know each other. Like we can say we love each other and on some surface level we love one another because we are united in Christ. That's true. But 
we don't really love each other to a deeper, like get in the trenches, fight for one another, care for one another, bleed for one another, like we don't, because we don't know one another. Fearless Church, you've heard me say this time and time again, and you'll hear me say it more. You cannot love who you do not know. Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment? He said, the greatest commandment is love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. You know what? You're not going to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength until you know God. I'm not going to. My lack of love for God is, is, is rooted in my lack of knowledge of who he is or my false knowledge of what I think he is or will do. In the same way, you're not going to love your neighbor as yourself if you don't know your neighbor as yourself. And I, I'm not saying that judging anybody but myself. Like, I'm not going to love men and women and boys and girls who are a different color than me if I don't truly get to know them. How do you get to know them? It's a lot less about comments, suggestions, something we... It, it is about the persistence of saying, you know what? We're going to have some conversations. So here's what we're going to do. I have multiple gatherings that I'm meeting with various people and saying, it's time to say, man, for the first time, many of us are beginning to hear. Now it's time to listen. How can we help? What can we do? How can we press the ball down the field? How can we represent Christ well as we, as the body of Christ, lead in this? Fearless Church, we take new ground. We refuse to be complacent. We refuse to stay where we are. Where we are, we can't just stay there. We've got to grow. We've got to mature. We've got to represent Christ. I've been asked multiple times, do you want Fearless Church to be a diverse church? The answer is yes. Diverse in age, diverse in race, definitely diverse. But even more than that, we need to be diverse and completely unified. Why? Because our God is a God of unity and diversity. And if we are going to reflect his image, then we better be diverse and we better be unified. How do we do that? By the power of the Holy Spirit working in and through our lives. It involves us being humble enough to pursue Christ with everything we've got, to pursue one another, to say, I want to know Christ. I want to be known by Christ. I want to know my brother. I want to be known by my brother. We're going to press into this. And so wherever we are today, Great, let's acknowledge that, but let's not stay there. And so I want to invite you and your family to join us online this coming Sunday. This coming Sunday, 11 a.m., we're going to have a conversation. Join the conversation. We're going to have a conversation. We are not going to solve the problem of racism or racial divide or division. We are not going to solve that problem on Sunday. But we can start making steps. We can start understanding one another. And to my black friends, my black brothers and sisters, like I want you to know, I love you. We love you. Now it's time to get to know you and to love you at a deeper level. It's time to press into those conversations. So it's not going to be perfect. We're going to say and do things that make mistakes. We're going to have to offer one another grace. But man, we've got to take the next steps forward. So again, join us this coming Sunday, 11 a.m. online. And let's, let's, let's start the conversations. Let's keep the conversations going. Let's press into this. Let's know one another. Let's love one another. Let's move forward as a church. And I'm not talking about just fearless church. I'm talking about the greater church of Dayton, the greater church of the United States of America. Let's, let's take steps farther and, and, and faster moving forward day by day, week by week, saying, you know what? We're going we're gonna to learn. Jesus said it this way. He said, they're going to know you're mine. They're going to know you're my followers. They're going to know you're my disciples by your love for one another. Jesus said in his, in his high priestly prayer, he, may, he said, may they be one as we are one. Who's he talking about we? He's talking about the Father and the Son. As we have unity in the midst of our diversity, may they reflect that and be unity amidst diversity. So we got to fight for this thing. 
And it's not something we can do. There's not like a, a strategy or a thing. It's something God can do in us and through us. And if you don't believe that God can do it, it's the same God that raised his son from the dead, making salvation available to all of mankind, that same God can radically change my heart and my mind, your heart, your mind. That same God can unify us in such a beautiful way that reflects the image of Christ in such a wonderful way and advances the gospel. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May people see a kingdom way of living here on earth similar to what they will see in the eternal kingdom of heaven where every tongue, every tribe, every nation, every color will worship together and bring glory and honor to God for all of eternity. So we are going to press in and have conversations. We're going to learn from one another. We're going to get to know one another and we're going to love one another. Join us this Sunday, 11 a.m. online, Fearless Church. I love all of you guys and I would say, God bless. Now let's go be fearless and change the world.